Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and returning to the old world. We've got news. Over the last couple of days, there's been information released by Games Workshop about the release of the Dwarves of the Mountain Holds. They're coming up for pre-order in a few days' time. So that means a new book, some new models, some returning classics, and perhaps some shifts in the game's meta. Let's have a look at what we know so far. Well, what is coming out? Well, first and foremost, let's start with the Arcane Journal. We know what Arcane Journals look like. A couple of armies of infamy, some mercenaries, some extra magic items, and some additional lore. Dwarves have been struggling, I think, so having this Arcane Journal will hopefully give them a little bit more balance and make them a little bit more effective on the tabletop. So what are these two armies of infamy? Well, this is where Games Workshop has, has kind of bowled a bit of a googly, really. I think given the characters that we knew were coming, Slayer King, for example, that we were expecting maybe a Bugmundsy sort of list and an army to reflect the forces of the Slayer King himself. But that, that's not quite right. What have we got? Well, we've got a royal clan. So this represents the more conservative elements of dwarven society, led by a mighty king or queen. We're seeing a distinct lack of black powder weapons in these lists, but the background to this, according to Warhammer community, is that being an army of a king, there's loads of cash floating around for things like runes etc so i'm expecting this to be very much a close combat oriented force hammerers iron breakers warriors long beards all that sort of stuff but the lack of more newfangled inventions like cannon and flame cannon means there's going to be a lot more reliance on cold steel and the dowdy shield and mass of armor the other Force of Infamy is the Expeditionary Force, more representative of a force led by the Engineers Guild. Again, this came as a little bit of a surprise because looking as a, an Expeditionary thing, I thought this would more relate to a force around Bugman and Bugman's Rangers. So again, something that took me a little bit by surprise here. But it'll be interesting to see how this takes on the tabletop. Let's move on and look at some of the things that are actually going to be coming out as part of pre-order. And first and foremost in this, we've got the Battalion box set. We've seen this before. 32 Warriors, 32 Quarrelers, or they can be made up as Thunderers, and a couple of Gyrocopters. Now the Gyrocopters, I think, are definitely going to see play in a lot of people's Dwarves lists. They give some much needed mobility and some chaff slash redirection. They're also actually quite tough and can hold units up, delaying an enemy's advance. Really useful if you're using the Dwarf Gunline model. The Quarrelers, Thunderers, as we've seen so far in sort of the Grand Army sort of lists, I think they will see a bit of play. They're quite useful, particularly if you line hammer, because you can take great weapons with your Thunderers, Quarrelers, making them reasonably effective in close combat after they've uh, got their shots off at opposing units coming in. You could also, I guess, use these models as rangers as well to increase their usability. As for the 32 Warriors, I suspect they're most likely to be used as longbeards in most games without seeing, obviously, what the armies of infamy look like at this point in time. I think overall, though, 32 is probably too many. I don't think you're ever going to use that many warriors slash longbeards. I guess with a bit of conversion work, you could perhaps use them as other troop types. And of course, overall, with the battalion box sets for all races now, apart from Tomb Kings and Bretonians, there are going to be no characters in the box. When I talked about this before, good few of you did point out that perhaps there'd be a bit more flexibility than I'd originally given the box credit for and on reflection yeah absolutely I think certainly the Quarrelers, Thunderers you'll be able to use a reasonable chunk of them 
I still think, though, you've probably got a few too many worries, a few too many quarrelers. And if the numbers have been dialed down a little bit, just tweaking it slightly to give you an extra thing, and a character or something like that would have been really nice. But that's clearly not the direction of travel. Games Workshop are going in with these Battalion box sets. Next up, we've got some reference cards and dice. Now, we've seen leaked images of the dice since really day one of Warhammer the Old World and release day, which made us think that the dwarves would be coming as the third faction. Obviously not, orcs and goblins took that position instead. Now, a lot of people do get quite excited about the reference cards. I guess they can be quite useful. From my perspective, I think with the quality of some of the third-party apps floating around now, and quite frankly, the books being pretty usable, um, it feels like the cards perhaps aren't as necessary as they are for other games such as Warhammer 40,000. Although, when I talk about Warhammer 40,000, appreciate the rules change so often that actually those cards become limited in their use because they get out of date so quickly. Not a problem I'm expecting for Warhammer the Old World. I just don't think we're going to see anything like the pace of change, not least because it's a specialist game rather than a mainline game, um, but also because it just doesn't seem to have that level of need for constant change. Let's move on, though, now to some of the models. We've been told about one special character, Vian Ungrim, Iron Fist, the Slayer King. And really it was information around characters such as this that led to me, and I'm guessing quite a few other people, expect to see a force of Slayers as part of the Arcane Journal and the Armies of Infamy, particularly when you also look at some of the other models that are going to be coming out, such as the Goblin Hewer, the Doom Seekers, Slayers with axes on chains. There seems to be an introduction of a reasonable amount of variety of classic Slayer models, which made us think that it would be plausible that the forces of the Slayer King would march as an army of infamy. Looking at other characters, we've got a Lord on a Shield Bearer. So we kind of, again, kind of knew this was coming and that there would be a new model because the old model had two Shield Bearers and the rules say the new model has three. So I think we knew that a new model would be coming in this regard. Another new character is going to be a Thane on Oathstone armed with a handgun. We're also going to see a release of some of the classic characters. So we've got a runesmith, an engineer, a resin command set consisting of a Thane with battle standard bearer, king on foot, and a slayer of legend. Now, I think it's likely you will want a BSB, although I think maybe the leadership of the dwarf force means you could theoretically try your hand at going without, but of course it's another chance to pack on some useful runic standards, which seem to be fairly prevalent across the dwarf armies that I've come across. Slayer of Legend will really be useful, I think, if you're intending on running Slayers, and whilst there have been a couple of people out there talking about using Slayers, I don't think they're really seeing the levels of play, their lack of armour, really making them vulnerable to shooting. Um, I just think Dwarf players seem to be leaning into other unit types. As for regular troops, we've got a return of the Warrior box set, the Slayers, Hammerers, and Iron Breakers. So this is really a load of the Age of Sigmar stuff coming out of retirement and shifting back into the world that was. Looking now at mercenaries, we've got some Imperial Dwarves, and these really are a throwback. Personally, I love these older models. I think they look really interesting and also, of course, could be something that would be useful for other factions as well. You wouldn't even need necessarily being as they're armed with spears to take them as mercenaries if you wanted to stick them in your Empire of Man force. You could just use them as regular Empire troopers if that's what you wanted to, just to give you that little bit of diversity. So if you're mixing in um, dwarves, halflings, ogres, so that classic fifth ed, fourth ed sort of vibe for your armies 
of the empire of man. And then there's the artillery. So we've got a grudge thrower, basically a stone thrower, a bolt thrower, a flame cannon, and the goblin hewer. So as I mentioned earlier, I think it's quite interesting to see the goblin hewer and the doom seekers making a return. If memory serves, these were quite limited runs figures from 6th edition around the time of Storm of Chaos, etc. Definitely giving a bit more variety to a Slayer theme, if that's what you want to do, particularly maybe around more narrative games rather than ones that are strictly using the army uh, composition rules. Two more models worth talking about. We've got the Anvil of Doom. So the Anvil, I think, is pretty much an ever-present. It's something most Dwarf players, I think, are using, gives them access to a little bit of offensive magic and a few buffs, so definitely something we've seen a lot of. And finally, but by no means least, we have Bugman's Cart. This gives a buff to movement, so I think is really going to help with that close combat orientated force. So we've already got units relying heavily on a combination of drilled and marching columns to really get those dwarfs moving up the table quickly. So a dwarf with movement three inches is suddenly becoming movement nine inches using marching columns, potentially quicker if it's backed by a cart. And then you can use drilled turn two, turn three to reform into a fighting formation and then launch a charge. I think Bugman's cart could be a really powerful addition and we could see big columns of Dwarven forces rocketing up the field at pretty unexpected rates of movement um, and crashing into the unsuspected lines of their opponents. I'll be interesting to see how you get hold of Bugman's cart. I guess it's probably going to be an expeditionary force. That would make sense. But if it's also available to the royal clan, then I think, yeah, that could get a little bit tasty. So overall, I think there's some good news here for players of the Mountain Hold. The new book's coming. It looks like there's going to be some quite interesting combinations that are available, particularly when you combine it with the fact that you can mix and match runes in a way that most factions can't mix and match magic items so you can really try and get the best out of the dowdy and quite traditionally defensive dwarves the mountain hold so tell me what do you think of the news regarding the forthcoming pre-orders is it something you want to dip your toe into or have you as one of the people on the tale of many gamers project that we were running on the channel recently declared they've, they've kind of done with dwarves they've had enough they weren't having fun with them where do you lie in that debate? As I say, do let me know in the comments down below. All that remains for me to say is thank you very much for listening. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And there are many others like it floating around on the channel. If you've not already done so, please do check them out. Once again, thank you very much for listening. I am returned to the old world. Have a great day.